I know it sounds mad, but me and my wife bought a rolling road. I put it on a trailer and I've stripped it down and I'm trying to make it work. So I've blasted it, I've painted it, I've balanced the rollers, I've got new bearings. And uh, this is the process of winding the coils. It's got eight electromagnetic coils between two rotating discs and they can supply a huge load for your engine to work against during mapping. So I'm going to show you how I made this copper coil with iron core. Why I chose the materials and how I wound 800 turns of copper inside this insulating material. I've not done anything like this before. It's very exciting. It's a bit out of my comfort zone, but this is the process of winding these coils. Uh, and after this, I can start to put the running road back together and get work towards that day when I get my car on it and start testing it. It's going to be awesome. So this is the process, folks, of winding the coils. Cover those plates in the cling film because I don't want the material sticking to those plates because I'm using those for all eight coils, one at a time. Wrap them up and bolt them on. The bobbin centre will be staying there so I can glue the insulating material to that cast iron centre um, so that can stay uncovered. Next I take this 50mm glass fibre strapping if you like, it's quite thin but I put quite a few layers on. And then this paint is very special, it's electrically insulating varnish rated to a sort of a high temperature up to 180 degrees C. So I wrap that around and around the central coil making it at least a mil thick. And then cutting some more strips, I place them on like this. So that's got multiple layers as well, with a lot more of this varnish, putting lashings of the stuff on there. And then those, this is where those grooves come into play from the, uh, the lathe where I put those grooves on at the last minute. I can pull those tight, uh, pull the fibre cloth through, and that will keep it well out of the way while it's on the lathe for winding. Uh, so this is the other end. I've got to wait a day after I do the centre, a day after I do the top, and then a day again after doing the bottom and, uh, and coiling it with the welding wire in the groove. So this is a long process. Each job does not take particularly long, but it's a long process to wait. For the first coil, I also added this, just to drill a tiny hole and tapped it, and then a very short stubby bolt, as I'm demonstrating here, to hold the copper wire uh, in, this, in where you begin to roll um, the coil. So I weigh the coil empty and I weigh the um, copper. Uh, then I've got a really good idea when I've got to five. So I'm aiming for five kilos. And here we go. This is the second coil I did, I believe. Winding it and keeping it nice and tight using a piece of wood. And I sort of changed my technique over the, uh, over the, over the coils as I went. I've got one, at the time of narrating this video, I've got one more left in mind. And at the ends, between a couple of layers, uh, I put more of that varnish on. Now, there's no need for it in terms of insulating at this point, but I thought when it had dried, it just would give that a little bit more structure to the coil. Because, of course, when I take the end caps off to wind the second coil and the third coil, I do not want this copper falling off. So it will have its support removed. So I'm hoping that paint, when it dries, will give it some more support. You can see here some of the pages of calculations I've done. Yeah, nobody cares, mate. Right, look, stay tuned right to the end if you want uh, some scientific detail about the materials and the calculations I've done. So you can see it's going on in quite a satisfactory way at the moment. And I did learn that it's essential that it stays neat. Um, so work hard on the ends, the ends take ages, and then one in the centre, as long as it stays neat, one in the centre is quite quick. Across the middle there you see it very quick. Uh, adding more paint, adding more paint, and I'm approaching a point where I think I've got close to five kilos now. So with the first few coils I, uh, I take them off and weigh them sort of multiple times, but as I went on I got to learn exactly what it should look like. So initially I've left the coil on the lathe and I'm weighing the spool uh, to see, there you go, around 500, 500 grams, as far as 5,000 grams has gone missing from that. So that's pretty good. So I'm confident enough there to cut the copper now. And then I can confirm that by weighing the coil itself. But of course there is a, a, a bit of additional paint on there, but it's only a few grams. Uh, so that has had, let's see it. Yeah, a little more than five kilos. Is it 560 or 580 added? So this is the uh, the next little tricky bit. And it's going to all be done in the same uh, at the same time. Pulling the fiberglass down to wrap it over the copper coils and then binding that tightly with more um, fiberglass cloth, impregnating the whole lot with this insulating paint. So I did a lot of research, I spent a lot of time on the calculations for the coils, but also the materials I was going to use. I thought about this for months, really, while I was doing the early stages of the build, or the strip down, if you like. 
And this, I think, is the best thing I could come up with. It's been several days now with this paint hardening up. Uh, it's nice and dry to the touch and these parts feel quite firm, this, uh, this strapping. So I'm going to remove the end caps because I need them to make the next coil. Uh, and let's hope that the whole thing stays nice and rigid and doesn't fall apart because that was the whole point of the exercise. So if this fell off now, if this coil sort of fell apart, it'd be a disaster. But luckily, they all stayed in nice shape. Uh, so I think bind binding them binding them tightly together and the addition of the paint and the fiberglass, making basically a GRP. Excellent. That is a very good result, I think. Worked really well. That's the other end, and... Mm, so that one has remained sealed. Really pleased with that. I do have these stainless steel cable ties which I'd like to put around the coil, maybe in three locations, because they do, um, they are subject to mechanical loading. The magnetic force pushes the coil. It's only DC, so it's not cyclic, but it is cyclic in terms of when it's switched on and off. Uh, but I think, I think I want to put another layer of something on there, just to protect this from erosion from this, but I might be reading too much into it, I don't know. <laughs> so this is the time to test it. I want about 2.3 ohms, I think, 2.4. Speaking between 2.3 and 2.4, both of those two coils now, if you multiply that by 8, because they're going to be in series, it'll be 18.8. .8. So 2.35 times 8 is 18.8. .8. If you take the 192, which is the highest voltage I believe that the controller can supply, 192 divided by 18.8 .8 gives you... Uh, no, I can't get the numbers on my head. It's around about 10 amps anyway, um, which is just under 2 kilowatts, which is perfect, because I think it's, it works at about 9 amps at the 220 volt socket in the house. So this can be driven fully off a domestic socket, which was my target. Um, which means there's more resistance, so there's more turns, which helps a lot because the power, magnetic power, is almost exactly the same. But it is, I think, under 10% less than the original, so it'll be 1400 newton meters, almost exactly, I think, maximum rating of the torque uh, at the rollers. So that's great, man. Depending on gearing and a few things, really, tire sizes and stuff, it's anywhere between 350 or 300, I think, to 500 horsepower uh, being held continuously on the on the on the brake. So I'm super pleased with this. The, uh, all the calculations worked. The coils physically are small enough to fit next to each other. Um, they're coming out good. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. The calculations all worked out. So it's powerful enough that I will know if it's worked or not. If I get the scimitar up to speed, the brake should be powerful enough to completely overcome the scimitar's full power. Uh, if the engine in the scimitar can hold up against the brake, then I know my calculations were wrong, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm confident it's going to be good. So I'll wrap this video up soon, but I wanted to show you, this is the second one I've made. It's got nice flat edges, it's six millimetres smaller in diameter than the first one I made, which has got a slightly barrel shape appearance to it, slightly bumpier. They still sit next to each other, I can show you that. Ugh. When that one's in place, there's still room like, between the two, but there'll be three millimetres more room if I was to remake that coil. Uh, and then just going back to where it was. If I put the lid on it, you can see how the arrangement's going to look. So that's quite cool to see, the first two coils. Yeah. I'd like to know your opinion on this though. I know that this this first coil I did, the bigger one, is structurally fine. There'll be no problems with the forces it feels, the electricity going through it's fine, the um, mechanical strength of it, and the magnetic field it's going to generate. It's got the same number of turns and the same resistance as the other coils. The only two things I can think of are, firstly, it's bigger, so the gap between it and the next coil is slightly reduced, reducing airflow slightly. That's not much in that, really. But the other thing is those top, what would it be, three layers, maybe, where the copper coiling is not neat. They're not sat flush against each other, those copper coils. So the points of contact are far more sparse, less of them. So heat from the core would be slightly less conducted outwards. That's all I can think of. So I'm genuinely on the fence with this. This video will be going out long before I've finished all these coils. I've only done two at this point. And when it comes out, I might have done three. So I'm undecided. I'm literally on the fence about whether to, to redo it or not. It's going to cost about another £100 after delivery and so on in copper. 
as a car, I won't be able to reuse what's there. But is there any point? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. I know that the copper, I've calculated the winding so that they won't get hot by themselves through the electricity flowing through them, if you like. But they will get hot through their proximity to the hot disks. The rotating disks, if you're on high power for a long period of time, they can get very hot. And that will conduct across the gap to the to the shoe, uh, which is on the end of the core, and then the core will get warm, obviously. And I know that although the paint I've used in order to create these coils will start degrading at 180 degrees C, the actual coils themselves, the enamel on the coils, will take up to 220 degrees C. So they're, they're pretty good. They're as good as I can get them. But, yeah, if it was to fail through high temperature, that one would be the first to go. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know. Should I redo that first coil or not? I just don't know. <laughs> the other thing to consider is it's buried. Although you can see it and touch it when the whole thing's assembled. Uh, it's You've got to disassemble a lot of the rolling road to get to those coils. To change that coil if it was to ever fail. Let me know in the comments. Should I redo it? Or should I leave it? In terms of choosing materials then, I need it to be electrically insulating, uh, structurally strong, mechanically strong, you know, and um, be able to deal with high temperatures. So I've got some uh, of this for the tails which stick out of the coil. It's just a woven, a woven fiberglass high temperature shield, uh, insulation for a cabling, so that's perfect. That, that was fine, nice and cheap. Uh, and then I've got through three rolls of this stuff so far. So I think it's like 0.3 mil thick strands uh, woven into a sort of a band and that's glass it's just glass um, fibers okay so that obviously is an insulator it's very temperature resi resilient and um, and it's very strong mechanically strong as well and of course grp like my uh, reliance scimitar here uh, glass reinforced plastic is very strong the achilles heel of course is the is the, um, the plastic side of it uh, as in temperature will will degrade it eventually so this is the best i could find and it is um uh, electrically insulating varnish it's, it was sold as 15 quid a tin I got through three of these tins uh, in total and it's what is it 70,000 volts insulated it can insulate 70,000 volts per millimeter thickness uh, of, of paint so it's pretty good stuff and it's also high temperature so it's rated up to 180 degrees C when it will start to degrade the enamel on the copper is rated at a 220 degrees C so I've tried to think well if it goes that extra 40 degrees higher and this degrades we should still be all right. There'll be a bit of smell, obviously, while it's happening, but you'll still be, uh, copper coils will be completely surrounded by glass fiber and the enamel on the copper itself should remain intact up to 220 degrees C. So even if they get a little bit stinky, it should be all right. One of the coils, subsequently, I've put a little thermocouple in it, just the one, just to check very uh, occasionally. So those are the materials and why I chose them. Here's a little look at the calculations I've done. I've tried to do this from three different angles. So I did it on this on a spreadsheet twice, and then I did it on um, I did some paper calculations as well um, to to reinforce it. I wanted to make sure everything was absolutely sound. So I did start with 2.3 millimeter thick wire, 370 turns per coil, uh, which gave a pretty low resistance, 0.5 or 0.4 ohms or something like that. So the whole thing was very low resistance, and it was set up for a 96 volt controller. Um, so there are a number of rules you've got to stick within. You need it to be less than, what is it, point, no, less than five amps per millimeter squared uh, cross section of the wire. That's like house regs, I think, to keep temperatures very low. So there shouldn't be any heating internally from this, uh, from this, from these coils through due to the electricity. There will be heating from other factors, but so that's something to consider. Uh, so what I did was I halved the cross sectional area. So I went to a, a point, uh, 1.6 mil wire. I doubled the length, so we're tripling, no, we're quadrupling resistance at that point. Um, but I've doubled the voltage, so we've halved current flow, doubled the voltage. So the power is about the same. Um, but what that means, uh, so I'm told from your dyno, uh, your dyno's Justine, or Justine, the uh, the controller will be that fraction more controlling more accurate at 192 volts instead of 96 volts and he also said the power supply will have an easier time uh, at 192 volts DC instead of the 96 so it's good news all round really and the last thing I've done is I've over it just that little bit I've put a bit more copper on and um, I've uh, as you saw previously in the video actually I've brought the current down just that little bit but increased the number of turns so the magnetic field strength has dropped only slightly so the rating for this was 1550 newton meters and it should be about 1400 newton meters or more uh, and the reason for that is because I want to be able to use a domestic power supply 
because these things are everywhere um, and 16 amp or 22 amp whatever the big ones are uh, are not everywhere so I'm keen to be able to use the rolling road in as many places as I can uh, yeah so that's the reason for that it's been a long road I've been doing this for months uh, and the calculations too and I've had some uh, people telling me that the calculations are not right but uh, Justine backed it all up the guy who supplied the, uh, the, the rolling road controller uh, and there was an individual on Facebook who uh, I forget his name, but thank you very much. Who said he's done something very similar and it worked a treat. So that is excellent news. If you watch this bit at the end, fair play to you. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching this far. I really appreciate your support, folks, and uh, I look forward to showing you more.